Psycho-Cybernetics, a book written by plastic surgeon turned self-help author Dr. Maxwell Maltz, utilizes a mechanical perspective of our body and brain's activity to create a new system of behaving and thinking. This book is a cornerstone of the self-help genre and is chock full of big ideas that can empower us to create a happier and more successful life. Here are the top seven lessons from Dr. Maxwell Maltz's Psycho-Cybernetics. Lesson one, understand that experience is important. Throughout Dr. Maltz's time working in the medical field as a plastic surgeon, he realized that people would have plastic surgery, but their inner attitudes and feelings would remain the same. After having these experiences, Maltz came across cybernetics, the requirements and actions of machines that allow them to effectively complete tasks. Maltz realized that the same processes could be applied to people to achieve success or failure. He outlines that people's experiences are similar to machine programming. Our experiences will lead to specific outcomes. More importantly, we're capable of changing these experiences like programming. He encourages us to consider how we can use our experiences to achieve successful outcomes. However, Maltz also encourages us to read this book with experience in mind. Hence, he suggests we actively read the book by taking notes. Lesson 2. Change Your Success Mechanism Maltz points out that each of us has a self-image that is developed based on our experiences. Our self-belief will guide how we live our lives. Subsequently, some people seem to continually fail, while others are perpetually successful. Their experiences, failure, or success guide their future behaviors. He learned that most people aim to change their self-image through external changes, similar to plastic surgery. On the other hand, some people promote positive thinking about the future but don't address their self-image beliefs. Both of these types of people are bound to fail. Instead, he suggests that true happiness comes from achieving an adequate self-image we can live with. In his book, the subconscious is considered to be a mechanism controlled by our mind. Hence, the function of our subconscious relies on the goals we set, and these goals are developed through our self-image. Based on these assumptions, our self-image dictates the limits of our accomplishments. Lesson 3. Know that imagination and relaxation matter. The way we react to our environment is generally automatic and without thought. Therefore, our reactions are based on our internal systems. Hence, what's important is what we believe to be true. These beliefs are what creates the reaction. A lot of studies have found that mental practice indeed improves performance. Therefore, we must practice correcting our mental image of a specific action. Making changes to what we believe is far easier than trying harder. Instead of doing excessive effort, we can relax and enjoy the process. Maltz encourages us to alter our self-image to improve our outcomes. By picturing ourselves differently, we will act differently and improve our life. We need to avoid being too harsh on ourselves and maintain an optimistic attitude. Relaxation is vital when seeking to alter our self-image. Maltz outlines that our imagination is crucial in encouraging relaxation. Lesson 4. Use Rational Thinking Rational thinking is an effective tool for changing our behaviors and beliefs. Rationality, for example, allows us to realize that negative unconscious thoughts don't always have to be resurfaced in order for us to move on. Instead, it is more rational to focus only on the mistakes that will help us towards our goals. We should forget these mistakes once we practice obtaining our goal. Maltz suggests that we are capable of creating personal success by purging all negative memories. When we start feeling negative, we should look for the cause of the negativity. More often than not, this negativity will turn out to be irrational. Therefore, we must use rational thinking to show the absurdity of our negativity. We should repeat this practice whenever negative memories or thoughts surface. In this space, encourage positive and rational beliefs. Lesson 5. Avoid Emotional Scars Individuals with weak self-images are prone to become emotionally damaged during challenging experiences. This is because our response to experiences leaves us with emotional scars. Maltz suggests practicing relaxation to prevent these scars from forming. Maltz also guides us on how to remove emotional scars that have already formed. He specifically describes forgiveness as a scalpel to remove emotional wounds. We can start forgiving others and ourselves once we realize that unforgiveness only leaves us with a debt of emotion. We should never leave space for condemnation or hatred. Forgiving ourselves involves accepting that we've made mistakes. We should also understand that blaming ourselves achieves nothing. Lesson 6. Remove Bad Conditioning Most of our responses to the environment will be conditioned. They're reactions we have learned and completed automatically, and some conditioned responses will have a negative effect on our life. We can, however, unlearn conditioned responses. Maltz suggests we start by delaying our response to a stimulus. This period of non-responding is a form of relaxation and encourages positive feelings. These positive feelings act as a natural form of tranquilizer. One way to delay our response is to create a quiet room for ourselves. This should be a mental space place of total relaxation within our mind. Maltz suggests we start by practicing before we go to sleep. Lesson 7. 
find the good in everything. Crises in general are considered universally adverse events. However, Maltz defines a crisis as a situation that either makes or breaks us. Suppose we learn how to react appropriately to crises. In that case, we can obtain power, strength, and wisdom that we could not otherwise have obtained. In order to learn how to turn a crisis into an opportunity, we need to start reacting to all challenges in the same way we would respond to a crisis. In conclusion, Psycho-Cybernetics focuses on how we can use our mind to steer ourselves towards positive goals and success. Can you view your brain in a mechanical perspective? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my new content. You can also get a free copy of the audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time.